Hey everybody, this is Ion Stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to do the Mars Cap mod on the Yaesu FT60R ham radio. I've already done it to my radio, but I'll go through each step to show you how I did it. I also have high quality images to show you as well. Now before starting, I am not responsible for what you do to your radio. Attempting to do this mod may damage your radio, making it useless. Do it at your own risk. If you're familiar with Baofeng radios, like the one I have on the right, the Mars Cap mod will give you uh, the frequency range similar to the Baofeng radios. So, of course, uh, you should follow all the FCC rules and regulations when transmitting on certain frequencies that this mod gives you. There are six parts to this video. One, the tools you need. Two, information about the mod. Three, disassembly of the radio. Four, locating the component. Five, modifying the radio. And six, reassembly of the radio. Here are the tools that you need for the uh, Mars Cap mod for the FT60R radio. First one is a razor blade you see on top here. A small screwdriver, similar to a jeweler's screwdriver set. And you want to use some small Phillips tips on the left as well as a small flathead. You will also need a very small flathead screwdriver or something very narrow. I'm actually using this tool here to unscrew the nuts as you see here. So what is the Mars Cap mod? I'm not an expert on the mod but I'll share with you what I know. Mars stands for Military Auxiliary Radio System and Cap stands for Civil Air Patrol. I'm not exactly sure why they named it that. If you do know, please leave it in the comments. I'd appreciate it. Now the mod will give you a wider transmit and receive range for both VHF and UHF, or 2 meter and 70 centimeter. After doing the mod, it will give you an extended range for VHF, which is 137 to 174 megahertz. For the UHF, it'll give you 420 megahertz to 470 megahertz. Now I know this mod works uh, for my FT60R because I've done it already and it gave me what I needed for my work. Now this Mars Cap mod is also available for other models of Yaesu radios. Now if you do do this mod successfully it will reset your radio and delete all of your programming. So you will need to reprogram your radio after doing the mod. Now I program my radio by hand so if you program your radio through software you will have to do that on your own. Now this mod only requires the removal of one surface mount resistor on the main circuit board and you can discard the part or component after you remove it. Lastly I highly recommend that you ground yourself to just discharge any ESD that your body might have before handling the main circuit. And now for the disassembly of the radio. Now the reason why you're disassembling the radio is to get to the circuit board and find a small surface mount component, a single component, to remove. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure your radio is turned off, and mine is. Unscrew the antenna and remove it. And remove the battery. There is a clip right here. That's the battery clip. It's kind of difficult sometimes to remove it. Flips down, lift it up, slide it out, set aside. Next you want to remove the belt clip and there are two screws located right here and here. And luckily they designed it really well so you can remove the screws easily. They put two holes here on the belt clip and you want to find the appropriate size Phillips tip and just unscrew these two screws. I did not do this earlier but I did it now. It's a good idea to put your small screws and parts into a small dish so you don't lose anything. Okay, I have the last screw here coming off. Set the screws aside. Remove the clip, set that aside. Next you want to take a small flat tip screwdriver, slip it underneath 
the volume and switch knob and gently pry it up and pull off the knob. Set that aside. You want to do the same thing to the selector knob. This knob has two parts. This top part and this bottom part. After removing the knobs, notice that there are two rubber gaskets here. You want to use maybe something uh, sharp or pointy. Gently lift up the rubber gasket without cutting it. Hopefully you can see that. And what I want to remove is this nut holding in the knobs or the volume control knob. So I guess the rule is what uh, righty tighty lefty loosey. So you want to put this small tip into the slot here and try to turn it. It shouldn't be too tight. You may have to put some pressure on it if it's too tight. And just loosen it up. You can use a really thin needle nose pliers, a long one, to do this. And you want to do the same thing with this one here. Okay, after loosening up this nut and this nut here, you should be able to just drop them out. The next step is to get your small Phillips head an appropriate size and remove this screw, this one here, the two small ones located here and here, a total of four screws. Okay, at this point you want to make sure that the antenna is removed, these two nuts are removed, as well as these four screws are removed. Now you're ready to open up the case of the radio, but before you do that, you want to make sure that you pull these things out and turn it. This is the uh, battery latch here. You want to pull up on the bottom here. This latch will probably fall out, that's okay. But you want to pull it, separate the bottom section here, and at the same time, kind of separate it like this and then pull out because you want these things to slide out correctly. You also want to watch out for a gasket that will be around the radio and you'll see that. You, you want to make sure that you don't damage the gasket. Okay, there goes the uh, battery latch. Notice the gasket here that goes all around the radio for waterproofing. Okay, you want to separate it. At the same time you want to pull this section out so it'll come out of the holes of the case.
Now let's look at some of the images that I took. This is the main circuit board. Focus on the right side in the middle just above the white keypad area indicated by the arrow. Now zooming in I circled the surface mount resistor that needs to be removed and discarded. It's maybe one to two millimeters in size. I'm not using my soldering iron to remove the component because the tip is too large. So I'm using a razor blade to dislodge it. Now before showing you how to do it with a razor blade, here's what it looks like after the component is removed. Now I'm going to show you how I removed the surface mount component on the Yacy radio, the main circuit board. Now I'm using a, a relay board here as an example because it has a surface mount component on it similar to the one on the Yesu circuit board but this one is larger so you can see it better. So what I did was I took my razor blade and I wedged it underneath on the side of the component and I basically put some pressure on it, flicked it up. Be very gentle, flick it up. You don't want to add too much pressure in the beginning. You want to slowly add pressure. Now this one's not going to come off because there's lots of solder on it as you can tell, but the component on the Yesu board is not held on as strong as this and it only took me about seven flicks I guess and you want to put pressure on it to, and flick it upward not sideways because you might damage traces or other parts. So if you take your time and make sure you don't damage anything on the board. It will eventually come off. The key is taking your time. Now I know there are other ways of removing this component. You can use a soldering iron or razor blade as I'm doing. Do it any way you feel that uh, you can do it better. This is the way that I chose and it was very successful. Now that I showed you how I modded my radio using a razor blade, here is a before image where you see the component is still there, surface mount component is still there. And now this is after the component is removed. To reassemble your radio you want to make sure that the gasketing is in line all around the unit. It is undamaged. You also want to make sure that this thing here is in this position as well. Make sure that there's no debris or loose pieces of metal is on the circuit board. Place the front panel over like this. Push down gently. You have to put a lot of pressure down here by just seating it down a little bit. Take your battery clip and insert it like so making sure that the gasketing it's still in line
push it together and you should hear a little snap. Make sure this can move freely. At this point, you can reinstall the four screws here. Next, you want to install the two nuts that go right here, as well as the knobs. Okay, I got my pointy thing, or you can use a small flathead screwdriver. I am going to tighten up these screws here. Okay, after the uh, two nuts are tightened down, you want it snug but not over tighten. Get the two rubber gaskets that go over here, and you can just gently press them down. It should seat down pretty easily. Get your on off and volume control knob. You can reseat it down. And the next one is two parts. Get the flat part. And it should seat down like that. Press it down. It should spin. Get the top portion. You'll see that it's keyed. Now for the belt clip. Okay, after reinstalling the belt clip, you can reattach the battery pack. So my radio has been modified. I showed you the images from before that shows the before and after of when my radio was modded. You can see the surface mount resistor removed and I'm able to turn on my radio and remember everything in memory will be deleted and now look at the factory specs of the frequency range note on my radio I am able to enter in 462.5625 that frequency is channel 1 for FRS GMRS that's family radio service and general mobile radio service. So that tells me that I'm able to utilize this frequency and normally you cannot. And I have GMRS radio here on channel one. And that frequency is channel one. Let me key up. And that's how you can tell it's working. Thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you for all your support. Please like and subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Have a great day.